Okay, so if you take any sort of algebra course, um, Algebra 1, College Algebra, Introductory Algebra, Algebra 2, maybe not Pre-Algebra, that I will say uh, might be an exception to what I'm going to be talking about, but any other uh, sort of Algebra course or any Mathematics course that includes Algebra, you're going to have a 100% probability that you're going to run into a problem like this. So what am I going to be talking about? Well, I'm going to be talking about uh, finding the domain, the domain of a function. And uh, this is an absolutely critical uh, skill. Um, functions are tremendously uh, important in mathematics and in algebra. And you study quite a bit of them, uh, quite a bit about functions. So this little notation here, this is a function. And of course, we have some things uh, going on here. But uh, we're going to focus on finding the domain of this function uh, in the set of real numbers. So that should mean something uh, to you. And we're going to talk about what that means, what, you know, just what does it mean to uh, find the domain? Do you even know what this word means? Well, if you don't, then you need to stick around. If you're in an algebra course, stick around for a couple minutes. You're not only going to understand what this word means, but we're going to talk about how to find uh, the domain of uh, this particular function. And I kind of um, put in two um, things that we need to be very cautious about when we're finding uh, the domain of functions in terms of the set of real numbers. So this is a very kind of classic algebra problem. Again, uh, if you take algebra, you're going to have to know how to find the domain of functions, guaranteed. All right, so we're going to get to this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. And you guessed it, I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. But uh, over uh, the course of several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. That's a pretty bold statement. Uh, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here in a couple of weeks, but I also do uh, a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you uh, are uh, studying for the GED, high set, task, maybe the SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, um, ASVAB, uh, ACUPLACER, CLEP exam, ALEX exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, maybe a nursing school entrance uh, exam like the TEAS, all those exams and many others, there's a, a lot of math on these exams, okay? And if you don't do well, on the math section, you do not do well on the exam. So let me help you prepare. Uh, just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. I should have your exam. If I do not, drop me a line and I will help you out the best I can. Now, I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great uh, homeschool learning uh, system. I've been working with homeschoolers for 15 plus years. So you definitely want to check that out. And then obviously help those of you that are just struggling in your current math courses. Now, uh, if you are serious about wanting to do well in math. Now, if you're not serious, just disregard what I'm going to say. But if you are serious, then you got to be serious about this, and that is note-taking, all right? Over decades of teaching mathematics, it's apparent to me that those students who take great math notes, right, uh, on a daily basis, they always look like this at the end of the year. They're happy. They got these awesome grades, and then the reverse is true. Uh, those students who were like me way back in the good old 1980s, and what was I doing back in there? Well, I certainly wasn't taking notes. I was taking notes, but there were notes to my friends, and they were like, hey, what are we doing this weekend, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We didn't have any cell phones back there to text back and forth, but believe me when I tell you, uh, I was quite distracted, and my grades reflected that. My grades looked like this, and... Um, but I earned those grades. I earned them because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do, be doing in class. So if you're having a tough time in, in math, you got to look at, hey, are you putting in the work and effort? If you are, then there's other things we could talk about. But start here because this will resolve 90% of your problems, okay, your, your math challenges. But, you know, you probably missed a lot of material along the way. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes for you to study from to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get to our lovely problem here. And um, if you think you know how to find the domain, and there's a couple different ways to express this. So don't worry about uh, if you express it differently 
than I do. It's still an equivalent uh, answer. It's correct. So go ahead and find the domain of this function if you think you know how in terms of the, uh, of the real numbers. Okay. Now, if you're not, don't don't stop the video and go, you know, uh, do a Google search or whatnot. Uh, that's what I'm hoping to do. This, this stuff you should know by memory, okay, because functions are going to be a huge part of your, um, you know, what you need to know in algebra, okay? But if you don't really know anything about functions and domain, then let's get to it. So uh, let's, first of all, talk about uh, this thing right here. So we have a function. All right, so the function is what? Well, it's just some sort of rule, okay? Now, we can give it a rule like this, x plus 1 over x squared. All right, so we can have different names here. So we have, this is the function f, so f of x, or we can have like g of x. We can have all kinds of stuff. Matter of fact, we, let's do one that's even fancier. Let's do g of t is equal to t squared minus t, okay? Uh, maybe t plus 1. There you go. So here's a function. This have, uh, th These have uh, particular rules. And what is a function? Well, a function, you input certain values into a function. All right. So like here in this particular function, this g of t function, I can plug in g of 2. And then I'm going to do what? I'm going to, wherever, wherever I see a t, I'm going to go ahead and plug in a 2 and then I'm going to uh, calculate the answer, right? So this is 4 minus 2 uh, plus 1. So 4 minus 2 is 2, if I'm doing this correctly. So that's 3. So g of 2 was equal to 3, okay? So what did I do right here? Well, I evaluated the function. I plugged something in. I plugged in an input value, and I was able to do some uh, calculations, and I got an output value out. So that's good stuff. Now, that's kind of what a function, you know, the mechanics of a function. But let's answer this question, the domain. What is the domain of a function? Well, the domain of the function is the set of input values you can plug into the function. So you might be saying to yourself, well, just can't you plug in any old number into a function? Well, not really. Okay. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. All right. So that's what this particular problem is going to highlight. All right. You just can't plug in any number into all functions because uh, we can have um, issues. And I'm going to describe that right now. But again, the domain is the set of all allowable input values into a particular function. So let's get to it and uh, take a look at our problem here. All right. So this is the domain. I'm sorry. This is the um. The function we had in question, this f of x. So again, when we plug in, like let's say we want to find f of 1, I would replace this with a 1 and this with a 1, and I would just do this calculation. So that would be the square root of 1 plus 1, the square root of 2, um, over 1 minus 5, which would be a negative 4, and then I would get an actual value out. So that's, you know, looks like, you know, on the surface level, that's pretty good, right? But here's the deal. When you're finding the domain, okay, and again, we're talking about the real numbers, there's two conditions you need to be on the lookout for, okay? You have to avoid uh, that are not allowable, and here are the two uh, conditions. First one is you can never have a negative underneath uh, the squ uh, square root, like so. You can't take the square root of a negative value. So any value that would cause this to be a negative number right here would not be allowed. Let's just kind of make something up. How about if I try to find f of negative 10? If I'm like, okay, f of negative 10, mm, if I plug in a negative 10 right there, I'm going to get what? Negative 10 plus 1, that's the square root of negative 9, okay? That's a no-no, right? The square root of negative 9, now just to kind of test your current uh, knowledge, if you say, oh, square root of negative 9, it's not just uh, negative 3, wrong, wrong, wrong. You know, me as a math teacher, I'd be like this. No, you weren't paying attention. All right, go ahead and your calculator just to kind of satisfy your curiosity. Take the square root of negative 9. Your calculator might very well start smoking or possibly be vibrating violently, okay? <laughs> Meaning that your calculator doesn't understand. Now, if you have this uh, advanced, fancy, you know, scientific graphing calculator, yes, maybe you can come up with an imaginary number, 3i, but in terms of the set of real numbers, the square root of negative 9 is not negative 3, okay? Because negative 3 times negative 3 
is a positive 9. So this is a no-no. We don't understand this, okay? Again, we're talking about the set of real numbers. So here, a negative 10, because it caused a negative situation underneath the square root, is not part of the domain. So I'm like, oh, man, okay. Well, negative 10 is not part of the domain. So maybe like negative 100 wouldn't be either. So how do we describe the domain? Well, that's not the only condition we have to worry about. And I want to get to this in a second. There's another situation, okay? Any number that causes a zero in the denominator, let's kind of represent this way. So we just talked about this negative situation. But any number that causes a zero in the denominator is a no-no as well because you cannot have, uh, you cannot divide by zero. So go into your calculator, take five divided by zero. Again, your calculator will uh, probably start smoking and shaking, okay? Because it's like, hey, don't give me things I don't understand, right? So it doesn't understand this and it doesn't understand that, okay? So these conditions have to be, a, um, cannot uh, be allowed, all right? In terms of any input value uh, that we try to plug into the uh, function that causes any one of these conditions, uh, we have to avoid, okay? That's not going to be part of the domain. All other numbers are okay. So how do we determine specifically which numbers we need to avoid? Well, I'm going to show you that now. Okay, so again, uh, we can't have a negative underneath the square root, and we can't have zero in a denominator. So let's go ahead and first talk about this negative underneath the square root. All right, so what's underneath the square root in this function? It's x plus 1. All right, so we're going to say, all right, Mr. X plus 1, you can't be negative, right? We don't want you to be negative. It's okay. You can be 0, but you cannot be negative, all right? So this has to be positive or 0. 0 in the denominator is okay. I mean, 0 in the numerator is okay. So like 0 divided by 5 is 0. So that's okay. Well, we can handle 0 underneath the square root. So the square root of 0 is 0. So this number has to be positive or 0. It just cannot be negative. So... We're going to go and say, okay, x plus 1, because remember, that's what's in underneath our square root right here. And we're going to say, all right, when are you greater than or equal to 0? Okay, numbers that are positive are greater than 0. Okay, so when are you greater than or equal to 0? We solve this basic inequality, and there it is. We just uh, It's almost like solving an equation. So it's when all x's are greater than or equal to negative 1. I want to show you what the graph of this looks like here in just one second. So that's it, okay? So any x that's greater than or equal to negative 1 uh, will be okay in terms of not um, causing a negative situation underneath that square root. So now let's take a look at our um, other condition, and that is we don't want 0 in the denominator. So now we have to say, okay, x minus 5, when are you equal to 0 or you cannot be equal to 0, okay? That's this kind of uh, condition right here. So when um, so to solve this, x minus 5, uh, we can look at this two ways. It's like, when are you 0? So I can have x minus 5 equal to 0, or you cannot be equal to 0. It doesn't make a difference. The answer is going to be x cannot be 5. Okay. So if I try to find, let's go to our function here. It's getting kind of busy. But if I try to find f of 5, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to get a 5 down here. So that's going to be 5 minus 5 is 0. So that's a no-no. Okay, so we have um, kind of these two conditions here. All right, x cannot be 5, and all x is, they have to be greater than or equal to negative 1, so we don't have any negatives under the square root. So let's go down here and kind of graphically see this. So here's a number line. So here, uh, this little arrow represents uh, all the numbers that can be in our domain. All right, so let's just look at this graphically. So we're good to go if um, all numbers are negative 1, that includes negative 1, and greater than negative 1. So these are all the numbers that are greater than negative 1 this way, okay? But remember, uh, we run into a problem specifically at 5. So we cannot, we're going to have to throw 5 out. Okay, that can't be part of the domain team. So unfortunately, 5, you're going to have to get removed in this particular game, but uh, all these other numbers right here are okay, except for five. And uh, now we just have to describe this mathematically, and that is going to be the domain of this function. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so here is our function again. 
So uh, there's the, all kinds of different ways you can uh, uh, notation and, and ways you can describe uh, the set of values that are in the domain. Okay, but this is an easy way. So we'll say all x's all uh, that are greater than or equal to negative one. Okay, and then you can just say excluding x cannot be five. Right. So this is a perfectly simple direct way to describe the domain. Okay, so you plug in any value that's greater than negative one, maybe like x is 4 or x is uh, 178, you're going to be good to go. Okay, it's greater than negative 1, all right, including negative 1, all right? I can find even f of negative 1, all right, that's going to cause a 0 in the numerator. That's perfectly fine, but I can just uh, um, cannot, I have to avoid 5. I can't have f of 5 because that will blow up my function, okay? We don't want that to happen. All right, so again, functions, find the domain. I, I, we didn't even talk about range or inverse functions or all these other things. Just remember the word functions, all right? Functions, what's the root word there? It's fun, okay? So you're probably, uh, you know, possibly thousands of you watching this video are probably saying, okay, Mr. YouTube math teacher guy, Try not to uh, be a comedian. Just stick with your day job and teach math. But listen, I got to try right now. Uh, you know, whatever it takes to get you interested in doing uh, the things that you need to do to be successful in mathematics. Right. So, you know, uh, don't uh, minimize how important functions are. When I tell you anything, I tell you. Uh, in my videos, and I'm telling you from actual experience, there's a lot of things I can't do, but teaching math, I do pretty well. Uh, why? Because, you know, I've worked at it for several years, all right? There's, you know, that old saying, every uh, master was once a disaster. Yeah, so anything you do in life, okay, if you do it long enough, you get experience and you work at it, and you're eventually going to be pretty good at it. So math is one of these things I've been doing for decades. So I'm teaching you, um, I'm telling you stuff that, uh, you know, if you follow my guidance, you're going to do uh, pretty well. All right. So if this video was helpful in some way, if you liked it in some small manner, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand videos on my channel. I'm adding stuff all the time. Uh, if you go on my uh, playlist, uh, um, you'll see various um, uh, playlists, or you go to my channel, you'll see various playlists uh, organized from basic to advanced mathematics. But my best math help will be within my math help program. And um, again, you know, do your part. Uh, if you're struggling in math, start with your note taking, start with your um, your habits, and then you know, then talk to your math teacher. And then from there, you, there's so many other additional resources. If you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all. Uh, the videos that I've done, they're there to help you, but uh, go on the offensive, okay? Take initiative and figure it out because everyone can do well in math. I strongly believe that. All right, so that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.